sermon, The Pathway to a Good Life. I'll tell you what, I live a good life. I am so blessed by the Lord Jesus Christ. There are many people who look for education to make it a good life. But Ecclesiastes 1.18, the writer says that education sometimes increases sorrow, doesn't bring good things. Some people believe that the purpose for the good life is to eat, drink, and be merry. Well, the writer of Ecclesiastes, verse 2 and 1 and 2, say you, you feel empty. When you do that, then tomorrow, I remember when I used to work for a living, and I used to go into the, to, at work, and all those guys, and one thing I found out that if you want a loan, there's three people they have, they look at it real careful. Painters, which I belong to the Painters Union. Preachers, I belong to Preachers Union. Oh no, we don't have. And prostitutes. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the three that they look at real close when they give a loan. One reason the painters, because I, I don't know if they get high from the fumes from painting or if they get high from drinking too much. They, they came in on Monday, Monday morning and they're just, they're there. And I come in with a smile on my face and feeling good and they said, oh, go to your apartment and go to work. We don't want to see you. We don't want to talk to you. Folks, I'm telling you, eat, drink, and be merry is all right sometimes, but be careful. That's not what the good life is all about. A wise man in Ecclesiastes said that work is not always the best thing. Some people hide in work. Some people just work and work and work and work, and all it does is it destroy families, destroy their life. They just, that's their main focus is work. Some people say so that's the good life. I'm working for the good life, but they never enjoy it. Well, I want to introduce you today to the good life. I've had a good life. I grew up in a poor neighborhood, but nobody ever told us. We just, everybody was just alike. We were all poor. We never had anybody tell us that we were poor. We just enjoyed life because we had friends and family. We were so poor, the rainbow was in black and white. I've told you that before. And, and then when we're when we're poor, we, we did things good. We managed. I'm telling you folks, it's not external things. It's an eternal thing that makes you have a good life. In Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16, So they find it. It says, Thus saith the Lord, Stand by the ways and see and ask for the ancient paths, where the good way is, and walk in it, and you will find rest for your souls. And they said, We will not walk in it. We're living in a world that doesn't want to walk in the path of God. They want to walk in their own path or do their own thing. In Matthew 12, Matthew 11, 26 through 28 says, Yes, Father, for this way was well-pleasing in your sight. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. Nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and anyone, who, anyone to whom the Son reveals to him Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Father, thank you. Thank you for the promise of the good life. If we would just follow your pathway, walk with you and talk with you. Father, I'm 
trying to do that today. I want to be in your way, walking with you. I don't want to be in your way, going the other way. I want to be in your path, walking with you. For your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Father, I just want to go with you. Help me to understand that the Holy Spirit needs to speak through me. Use me as a vessel for your Holy Spirit to speak. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The good life begins when you decide to accept Jesus Christ into your life. John 10.10 10 says, here's a good life. I give you life abundantly and, and eternally. There's no better life than that. Abundant spiritual gifts. Abundant friends through Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters. Folks, we've got abundance of brothers and sisters across the world. I have met many of them. And we, we have life eternal. I have that promise that if I would die right here in this pulpit, I would go to heaven. And I, Billy Graham said, the last breath I take here be the first breath in heaven. I am satisfied to know that I have Jesus Christ. That's a good life. That's the beginning of the good life. You can see the greatness of nature. You can see the greatness of God in, in the stars. When I walk my dog at night now, it's getting darker, so I have to walk him in, at night. And when I had my nose, I wanted, didn't want people to see me anyway. So we walk at night, and I can see God in it on the home. One night I was coming out of, you know, I sing with pressure pipes. And one night we were coming out and I was talking to a lady and I said, look at that. God has made a beautiful sky. It was a crescent moon, I guess you call it. And at the bottom point, there was a star. Oh, it was so beautiful. I could see God in it. I could see God in, in through astronomy. I took an ecology class in college. <coughs> I enjoyed it. I enjoyed to look at the stars and seeing things like that. But you cannot really see God, as it says here, until you see Jesus. When you find Jesus, you have found the fullness of God. You have found him. You will find God because they abide together and when we abide with Jesus we abide with the Father we are one with him the good life begins with our, our saving knowledge of Jesus Christ I hope that you are saved today and you can have that promise that if something would happen to you right now you would be with Jesus the good life involves dedication Romans 12, 1 and 2. It also means that we, we need to, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> this feels like I have a stuffy nose. I can't breathe right. And I can't. But it says, therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your new spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove the will of God, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. Die to yourself. It's no longer you. When you're born again, you have a new life. The old life is gone. You have a new life. But you have to give it to the Lord. Because in, in Galatians it says that we are no longer our own. I don't no longer live. It's Christ that lives in me. We belong to Him. We belong to Jesus Christ. 
discovering how to give our lives over to him, making our body disposable, suffering sometimes, suffering for him. That doesn't mean you're going to be beaten, whipped, and that kind of stuff. I'm talking about giving up the things that you think are important. Paul just said they're dumb. Get rid of them. They mean nothing. You need to just turn your life over to him and let him be in control. The renewing of your mind. You have a new life, you have a new mind. A mind set on Jesus Christ, set on the things of God, set on the things of heaven. I am looking forward to that day when I get to heaven. But I'm also looking forward to tomorrow what God's got planned for me. What kind of good things he's got. Because every day I am blessed. First thing, I'm blessed to get up and breathe and get going. That's a blessing. You know, when I was looking at those people last night, they got old. I'm glad I didn't get old. <laughs> but I just, I, 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 I am blessed every morning and I want to look forward to what he's got planned for me tomorrow. Thursday morning, I got up real early so I could do my devotion before I went so I could pray. <laughs> before I went, and I thought, God, this is going to be a good day, and it was, it was a good day, I was able to sit there, do nothing for four hours, and boring, but it was a good day, and I just, folks, you just got to look at things God's way, your mind has to be set on him, he's got things planned for you, he's got Everything open for you. Renew of your mind means to be, don't be conformed to this world. Some people are so involved in this world that if Jesus came today and said, wait a minute, it's like my dog when I'm playing a game on a computer. My dog would come and want to go for a walk. I said, wait until I finish this game. Judy would say, wait until I do this. Or wait. Folks, when God comes, let's go. Leave this old world behind. There is nothing this world has to offer to you that is eternal. But God's got everything to offer you that is eternal. Be, don't be transformed. Renew your mind. Accept the thoughts and ways of God. For in, it says that in Isaiah that they are higher than our thoughts, higher than our ways, and we can't even imagine all the things he's got for us. We can't imagine that. But he knows what we, he's going to do for us tomorrow. What he's going to do for us today. We have a new life. Our mental capacity is given to us by God. And by grace it's being transformed every day. We can't change our mind. We can't change our ways on our own. We let God take care. The purpose and renewal of the mind is to discover the new experience that we have in Jesus and know that he's got a plan for us. In Jeremiah 29, 11, he says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare, not for calamity, to give you a future and a hope. That's a plan. That's a good life. Let him reach down and you put your hand in his and let him lead you. Let him take you along the pathway. As we talked about the sign this morning, a closer walk with him. There couldn't be anything better than a closer walk with Jesus. And he, he requires us to be self Denial. He requires us to be like him. More like him. That's my desire. You know, you're talking about gold, Bob. That's my goal. It's like Paul said, I haven't obtained it yet. 
But I have my eyes set on Jesus, and there's my goal. I want to be like him every day. The other day I was praying in my devotion, and I said, God, and I'm looking out the window. I'm thinking, God, let me be an instrument of your love, an instrument of your care as I go through this day. That I can be more like you, to love more, to be more compassionate, more caring, more understanding, and more willing to do what you would have me to do. It's not enough to, to make a decision, a desire, it is we have to do it. It's more than just a desire, we have to do it. When I go to Walmart, I try to smile and talk to the people there because they look grumpy and they look like they've been working hard. And I just want to smile and say, good morning. I've got two ladies that always look for me to, for me to come and smile. And I said, I still like to see your smile through the mask. And one lady was, anyway, you've got to go into the store, Nate. I don't know what they do. They look at you and smile. I don't know what they do. They, they used to be called readers, but they can't be called readers anymore. But anyway, she said, oh, I'm glad you're here today. I needed to see you smile. I said, I'm glad you're here today. I, I needed to see your smile. It doesn't take a minute to lift somebody's spirit. It doesn't take a minute to say, God loves you. God is determined, wants us to be determined to do it. Lean on Jesus. Trust Him. Trust Him that He'll take care of everything and we're going to be doing. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Lean not on your own self. Lean on Jesus Christ. Lean on God. Trust the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. Lean on Jesus. Folks, my problem is sometimes I think I need to be able to do everything. The doctor said, stay still for two weeks. I said, well, I've got things to do. He said, where? I said, well, I have a yard in the house. Sit down. Wait two weeks. It'll still be there. I said, Lord, if I don't do it, nobody else is going to do it. The doctor said, oh, well, I told the doctor that. He said, too bad. You need to sit still for two weeks. Well, that ended the, day, the next day. But anyway, it's, it's one of those things. You can't lift anything. You know, you can't, you can't breathe. You just do it. But lean on him, trust him. Trust God for whatever is going on in your life. I was sitting there doing this nose thing, and this nosy doctor, no, this nosy doctor was a nice guy. He just, he did everything right. And I said, you know, I've been praying for you that you'll do the right job. He said, well, thank you. I need all the prayers I can get. I was praying for him, but I was praying for me. And if he do the right job, everything will work out right. Amen. Trust God and talk to people. Let them know. The pathway to good life includes a determination. Be determined to do it. Be determined to walk with God. Don't walk on your own. My problem is I walk too much on my own at different times. And usually when I walk on my own, things don't turn out the way they should. You ever had that problem? When you ever try to do it yourself, instead of with God, it doesn't always work. It's okay to know what to do, how to plan, how to do all those, but be determined to do it. When God tells you to do something and you don't do it, James says that's a sin. The Bible says if you know what to do and you don't do it, it's a sin. God tells me every day things I need to do. That's why I have to confess every night. God, forgive me where I didn't do what I what you wanted me to do. I don't know about you, but I, I'm a sinner. 
saved by grace. I still sin. I still fall short of what God wants me to be. But I keep praying every night, and he says that he will cleanse me if I will confess my sins. He will cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Praise God. That doesn't mean we use grace as an, as an excuse to sin. Folks, I try not to sin every day. I'll be honest with you, I try not to. That's like being like Christ. He did not sin. He was perfect in every way. And God said, be perfect as I am perfect. Well, we're not going to make it like that here, but we ought to strive for that, that we should be more like Jesus and be more perfect, be more like he wants us to be and less like we want to be. De be determined to walk with God. And remember, as I told you, put your hand in his hand. Because if he's got it, he won't let go. But if you've got his hand, you might let go. I was sitting in Walmart parking lot the other day, and I was so proud of this man. His daughter wanted to, wanted to hold his hand, grabbed his hand, and he, he grabbed her hand and put it in his. That's the way it is, folks. He knew that if he didn't hold her, she might run out in front of a car. As long as God's got you in his hand, you're safe. You're secure. You can know that you're saved because Jesus said in John 10, 28, 29, that you are held in his hand and God holds you in the other hand and no one can snatch you out of his hand. You are saved today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen? Amen? Amen. All right, I just want to make sure that y'all are awake and hear what I have to say. But the pathway to the good life begins with Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The good life with Jesus leading the way leads us out of frustration, out of failure, the way through life of hardship, difficulties, disappointments, and way into abundant life. He didn't say he would stop all of those, but he would lead us through those. Have you ever been frustrated? Have you ever been disgusted? Have you ever failed? I like to read about, about uh, Edison. He says he doesn't call them failures, just mistakes. Things that happen. Start over again. I don't remember how many times he tried to get everything going and didn't work. Folks, the highest and best life that you can have today and forever is in Jesus Christ. That's the good life. Don't depend on the good things of this world. And folks, there's some good things in this world. I'm not putting everything down in this world. I enjoy my cars. I enjoy doing things and going places. And, but the greatest day is a day that I had Jesus. Oh, folks, November will be, Judy and I will be married 53 years. That was, I thought, was the greatest day in my life. Then we had two kids. The first one was, were kind of questionable. It's raw. We, we didn't have, but that was one, one of the good days. And then Heather, I thought they were, but the greatest day in my life was the day that I had Jesus Christ into my heart. From that day on, I've been walking with him, talking with him, and looking forward to going to heaven. He's the only way to heaven. If you want to go to heaven, you got to go through Jesus. In Revelation 3.20, it says, Jesus knocking at the door. If anybody hears me, hears my voice, and opens the door, I will come and sup with them. I will be with them. 
Isn't that wonderful? Just open the door of your heart and let Jesus come in and things will be good. Folks, you're gonna have difficulties. I don't care who you are. If you don't have difficulties, you're not living in this world. But don't you want somebody to be there with you? I've got friends around places somebody put on. Have you had friends 20 years? Yes, I do. I have friends that I've known for 20 years or more. And some of them are stick like a brother, but there's no one that sticks like my friend Jesus. And no one has laid down their life for me like Jesus did. Jesus laid down his life and he calls me friend. I don't know about you, but that's pretty special to me. And anyone who opens the door, he'll come in and, and be with you. I pray that you would have a good day and a good life. But let it begin with Jesus. That's why every morning I try to get up before everybody else gets up, pray, and seek the presence of Jesus. Even when I put my feet on the side of the bed, I got a crazy cat that just keeps pushing me off the bed, but I keep praying anyway and saying, God, thank you for letting me be able to put my feet over the edge of the bed and stand up and go. I just want to go with Jesus. That's the good day. God bless you all. We're going to stand and sing a verse of 488. Just as I am. Is that all right? <coughs> My choice. 488. <laughs> Just as I am. I think that's what it is. Isn't that what it is? Mm -hmm. Let's stand and we'll sing. I'll have a word of prayer and then we'll sing. Father, thank you. Thank you for today, for being here with us. Thank you for your presence, your power, your love. I pray that if there's anyone here that needs to make a decision to come and make a confession of faith, they would come today in Jesus' name. today professing faith in Jesus Christ. Wednesday night I went and went to talk to him and he wanted to talk to me and he became a Christian. Became a child of God. You want to say anything? I had a good, <clears throat> had a good visit with Brother Bob and uh, <clears throat> I uh, believe in Jesus. I'm going to transfer to this church so uh, I, I 
I have Jesus in my heart and trust him to be my savior. Amen. Amen. Oh, God. John Roy can't be baptized right now because he's got a port in his chest. He's been baptized. He wants to be a member of our church. What's your paper? That he would be a member. Amen. 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 And we thank God for that. Yes. Thank you. I want us wait this here. I want us to gather around him and pray. He's in stage four.